Hello and welcome to Swiftly Spoken, a fan made Taylor Swift podcast in which we analyse her artistry, including her lyricism, music videos and full album retrospectives. As always, we are your hosts Cameron and Lisa, and in this episode we're going to be discussing exclusive and unique editions of Taylor's albums. Okay, so in this episode, we're going to go through each of Taylor's albums in chronological order and then discuss um, interesting editions of that album. So these editions are either ones that are not in print anymore, have special tracks, have exclusive content, or just in terms of the packaging or the stuff included, they, they're they just interesting. Um, I'm quite a big Taylor Swift uh, collector, so I really um, have, I'm fascinated by all the different versions that um, each album has. So we're going to discuss uh, some of the really cool ones. These are not all of the editions that are available. However, they're ones that if you are a Taylor Swift collector or are looking to collect, these are some really cool hol- holy grails that you really want to get your hands on. Okay, so we thought we'd mention that before we get into discussing these editions, that because there are so many amazing versions of these albums that we want to discuss in detail, we're going to divide dividing this episode into two parts. So the first part, country albums, and the second we'll discuss the rest from 1989 onwards. Going all the way back to debut, one of the most interesting versions is the 2008 reissue Enhanced version, which sounds a bit of a mouthful, but it really is the full package if you're looking for a debut version with a bit of everything on it. Right, Cameron? Yeah, so because the original debut um, that was released in 2006 only had 11 tracks and went up to our song. Um, However, it did have a um, the Taylor's uh, Tim McGraw uh, on there as enhanced content, as well as her... um, debut at the Grand Isle d'Opry. Um, however, then in 2007, um, the deluxe version of uh, debut, which includes a holographic image of Taylor in the water, um, had 15 tracks. Um, so these obviously had our song and then um, I'm Only Me When I'm With You, Invisible per- and Perfectly Good Heart, as well as uh, Taylor's first cool with Tim McGraw at the end of the track. However, then in 2008, the reissued version that was released, it included the deluxe tracks of the 2007. And now that's basically deemed the standard track list for debut. Um, so nowadays, you would never deem I'm Only Me When I'm With You as like a deluxe track. Um, because of the reissue of debut in 2008 which included the same amount of songs however rather than having um, uh, Taylor's Cool with Tim McGraw as the 15th track it had a pop version of Teardrops on My Guitar but interestingly on the deluxe version the 2007 holographic the Teardrops on My Guitar that's included which is obviously number track three is the radio single version and track 11 which is our song is also the radio single version which is quite interesting so there's lots of differences um, between them and also the holographic version the deluxe did include a dvd um, which has tim mcgraw video as well as taylor's grand old opry a yahoo performance of tim mcgraw the teardrops on my guitar video the teardrops on my guitar video behind the scenes our song video our song video behind the scenes the place in the world shortcut which is really i love that um video so much um it's so funny seeing taylor back in the day chatting about um you know what she wants her career how she wants her career to go and that she wants people to sing um her like songs back to her in an audience it's just really sweet when you think about you know the full circle moment and looking back on it now so that's a really cool um piece as well as there's also a um cmt unplugged performance of picture to burn and there's a home video um of taylor's which includes um I'm only me when I'm with you. However, it's about five minutes long. There's some kind of bits in between. There's some videos of her and the band um, on holiday and stuff. So yeah, they're the kind of um, additions. And that's why there's a slight confusion with the original debut, the 2006 version that only has 11 tracks. And then Mm -hmm. the reissued version that um, has all of the tracks that we kind of know and love. The 2008 reissue is kind of the full version of debut. So definitely one to get your hands on. And to be fair, it's probably the easiest one to get your hands on because that's now the kind of standard. Yeah, oh, funny enough, it is like this amazing version with all of this content, but it has become the available version. Yeah. So that's great for anyone who wants to collect. Speaking of the original version, one of the reasons, as you said, for it to be interesting is because it's very strange to find a debut edition nowadays that stops, that only runs to, uh, you know, has 11 tracks. But another reason that a lot of people are interested in getting that original version is because in some of the original prints of the album, they have the original lyrics to a very controversial song, Picture to Burn. Yes, yes, they do. The the, uh, infamous original lyrics of Picture to Burn. Uh, But there are 
you know, versions of this album out there that do have this lyric. So the lyric in question is from Picture to Burn, and it's basically right at the beginning of the song. Picture to Burn itself is a song that has had many lyric changes throughout its yeah, life. Yes, so when you think of its original, the kind of my wife beater wearing, you know, like Daddy with is... his new automatic. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There is some. There is that version that has gone through a lot of changes. That song is quite interesting. Yeah, it's a very interesting. How it's, song, it got it... tamed down almost in each Definitely. version. It became more and more tame. Yeah. So that song, again, has a lot of a backstory to it, which I'm sure we'll explore one day. But the lyric in question that appeared on the original version of um, the debut album in the first verse is, that's fine, I'll tell mine you're gay. Now, that got changed pretty early on, to be honest with you, in Taylor's career. And now in most of the versions that you will find, and obviously in all of the versions printed after like 2007 onwards, including that 2008 reissue version, of course, have the lyric, that's fine, you won't mind if I say. Yeah, which is interesting. The 2007 Deluxe still had the um your gay lyric because that's on my cd that's the version that i have right. on there so yeah it's interesting that yeah, in 2008 they really decided to change up that lyric um, for sure and yeah, I'm, then I'm glad include all the really. songs <laughs> yeah i'm glad yeah. as well yeah um you know but yeah interesting um but funny enough it has made the original versions which they you know kind of want to sweep under a rug get rid of because it's not something that you know taylor defends or anything like that but it's made it kind of a very sought after edition of, of the album, trying to get yeah. your hands on that original, original lyric version. Yeah, definitely. And also that original 2006 CD that, you know, you would have bought back in the day. I think lots of people, there's something quite cool about having that because that was the version that original fans, you know, when they went yeah. out and bought the CD would have had um, rather than the 2008 reissue. Because I always, I remember when I first getting into Taylor and I bought the CDs I was all slightly confused I was like wait this came out in 2008 I was like I thought yeah. this was 2006 I thought like Fearless came out in 2008 when you know around the right. time in about 2009 when I discovered Taylor I was like confused about what this version meant um that's why it, um on the CD it will say in the kind of um copyright stuff 2008 because it was the reissue Another interesting addition, which isn't actually a physical one, is one that has been very contentious in the fandom. It's the Best Buy Digital Download Edition. Now, throughout time, it's been debated, I guess because so much time has passed since it first came out in 2006, whether this digital download edition provided by Best Buy of the debut album had an extra track on it, and the debate is whether it was I Heart Question Mark or I'd Lie. I don't know how the rumour started. I think there's some people that mentioned that on the Wikipedia page for it, the information was false, so people started believing that the song that was included as the deluxe digital download track was I'd Lie, but that is incorrect. Um, there's actually photos of the album from Best Buy, which have the little sticker on it that confirm that the song that it included was I Heart Question Mark. Yeah, so what's interesting is, yeah, um, this is the original 2006 version with the track list that goes up to our song. And yeah, the only difference between that and the standard original track list is that obviously the sticker on the front, which says free exclusive download. Um, and also it comes with a kind of... Um, a little card that you get your code to download um i heart question mark um mm -hmm. so yeah technically that is i heart question mark um was released as part of the debut album but only for best buy exclusive version that i know lots of people really try to get their hands on it's quite hard to come by and to find especially for a decent price because there is right. realistically no real difference other than the sticker and the yeah. card that comes with it because to be honest with you, all of those codes are, have been redeemed by now. Yes. It yep. is a sought after version just because it was back in the day that that was the only way to obtain I Heart Question Mark until uh, Beautiful Eyes was eventually released. And this is also interesting because it means that I'd Lie is definitely a fully unreleased song. Yes. Yes. Even though um, she does kind of, she has performed it a couple of times. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Officially, officially, yeah, it's still deemed unreleased because it was not released as part of the Best Buy, despite popular <laughs> opinion that it was. 
Okay, so another interesting version of debut is the 2018 Record Store Day vinyl version. Um, so in 2018, um, debut, fearless, and 1989 were released as part of Record Store Day, and they were all special coloured versions of the vinyl. So debut has a gorgeous blue um, vinyl. Fearless has a kind of golden clear vinyl, and 1989 also has a very very aesthetic vinyl, which is like this pink. Um, then later on for uh, Black Friday Record Store Day. 90, um, sorry, Speak Now and Red were released. Unfortunately, their versions are not as nice as debut 1989 and the Fearless ones because um, Speak Now is this kind of like dirty browny grey and mm. Red's is just clear, which is such a miss because, you know, we could have had a gorgeous red vinyl, but we'll explain why that didn't happen because of another release. However, yeah, the debut Record Store Day um, vinyl, unfortunately now is really hard to get your hands on for a decent price. Because back in the day, these would kind of sold around 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 like thirty pounds, whereas now these vinyl are hundreds, thousands. They're very very sought after, um, and debut is a really kind of gorgeous vinyl. I got it back in the day during record store day, and yeah, probably paid like thirty pounds, which is an absolute steal now. Um, but this is a really really cool addition um, to have. Mm. Obviously, the standard version of the debut vinyl is black, so it's quite nice to have a. Um, really gorgeous blue that really suits the album perfectly and it's interesting whether um, what colour debuts vinyl will be for debut Taylor's version Um, because obviously for uh, Fearless we had a really gorgeous gold for Red the standard was but we did have the Red Target Um, so yeah this is a really cool addition and definitely one if you're a vinyl collector or just a Taylor Swift collector in general this is a really cool um, addition to have of debut Next, moving on to Fearless. Fearless has a lot of different editions, I yes. must say. It's, it's one of the, I think it's the one with the most editions. Probably. Or probably tied with debut, perhaps. But it's the one with the most like visually striking differences as well. So the first one we have to talk about is the international edition. Just the standard version of Fearless itself looks very different. Like the American standard edition and the international edition, completely different photos. I'm yeah. sure many people in the fandom have seen it by now, but they have nothing to do with each other. It's so strange how they're completely different photos. It is. I've obviously grown up with the international cover. So that's right. the cover that I've associated with Fearless. That's the cover that, you know, the CD that I bought back in the day in 2009. So it's like, it's weird that, yeah, they decided to totally change the cover. And it's like, what, why did international, you know, what was wrong with the original Fearless that, you know, it felt like there was a need for the change a change to be made in the international edition because even the back of the cd is different mm-hmm. the cd itself is slightly different the booklet is the same um, yeah. other than the like, the extra tracks obviously which we'll discuss but um it's very strange that um it had a totally different cover and i'll never really understand why that was you know the case yeah so for anyone watching on youtube we'll put the covers up uh, but to describe quickly, the standard like American edition, let's call it, is the one that most of us know because if we don't know it from that original, we know it from its platinum edition, where Taylor is kind of like flipping her hair. It's, you can't really see her face, like most of it. Whereas the international edition, she's literally just like standing like to, up against like, the wall. Yeah, like yeah. To, like sideways and looking towards the camera. So. I guess the sentiment is the same, and it's from a similar photo shoot or the same photo shoot, but it definitely shifts the vibe of the album for sure. Definitely, yeah, and it's a kind of the colours are more kind of brown and rather mm, than kind but... of yeah, they're a bit more darker and kind of muted, a bit more neutral colours from the original. That's a bit more kind of golden and white and quite bright. So yeah, it's interesting that they decided to change it because then the platinum edition that was released in- internationally as well that had. The platinum edition cover is just universal across everywhere yep. um so it's very interesting and what is also quite interesting about the international edition is the bonus tracks that are included that are included as standard across all of the internationals which is should have said no um teardrops on my guitar and our song and these songs have slightly different mixes to the originals on from the ones that are included on debut so should have said no especially has a slightly more rockier kind of vibe and the teardrops on my guitar one is um, different to the pop version that is included on the 2008 reissue, but is very similar in vain. And the R song one, again, not massively different, but just slight differences in the background. I guess maybe to appeal to reduce the country elements of them, I guess, to make it more appealing to an international audience that maybe isn't as accustomed to country in comparison to an American yeah, audience. Yeah, I think 
that that explains that and it also explains perhaps the cover as well whereas yeah. Taylor was maybe more established in America where they already knew her face she could exactly, kind of get away yeah. with turning her face away whereas internationally actually, yes. perhaps they needed to see her a bit more so they could you know put a, a name a face to the name yeah, I guess I th- it's the I only thing I can think of I think that's very true yeah I, I think that's actually a really good explanation I think it's probably the reason why because it is strange that um, it is so different and she is properly looking at the camera um, mm. and because what is quite interesting as well is the debut album when it was first released wasn't actually released in internationally or in the UK at least right so like these three songs were like introducing people to previous to the versions. debut right yeah. that's interesting yeah um, and obviously this version the international version was released in the UK in 2009 so again like a year later um, so it was almost like they were like okay now let's kind of try and you know market Taylor internationally um, and what's quite interesting as well is on those original CDs they have um, on the bottom of them say like the number one best selling US album <laughs> so it's like it is it's almost like look this is really big in the states you know like this is this new album that you've never heard of before but it's huge right. in the states so it's quite interesting how yeah it was really kind of cleverly marketed to an international audience and I think you're correct there with the reason for the difference in cover and then they felt like Taylor was established by the time they released the platinum in 2010 yeah um, for sure so they felt mm-hmm. like they could use the original version the original cover other interesting versions include the walmart version of the standard cd uh which obviously is, was only available at that point in america and it comes with a bonus dvd of taylor in the studio writing and recording breathe and change which as a fandom we absolutely adore this kind of content i think yes. most of us loved when she did like the the writing of the songs for reputation, reputation for direct tv direct, uh, now yeah taylor swift now, yeah yeah was, but said, yeah yeah we love that so i think this started way back in the day and obviously now these videos can be found easily on the internet but um yeah they did appear first and foremost on the walmart version of the fearless cd yeah i think this is a really cool addition to have and like you said yeah if if you are really into watching taylor's kind of um how she kind of crafts these songs in the studio these are really cool this is a really cool addition to have and a very cool dvd and i do go back quite a lot and watch because i have this edition myself and it is mm-hmm. one of my favorites of my fearless versions because um it's just i just love being able to see you know how these songs are crafted and how taylor crafts them and having and then watching and also watching the breathe um behind the scenes really kind of um made me realize colby calais um input in breathe because i always when i first listened to the song i just i didn't even really realize who she was i thought oh maybe she you know, plays one of the instruments because you couldn't really hear her and her voice, her backing track voice sounds quite similar to Taylor's. Mm. So uh, initially upon first listen of Fearless back in the day, I kind of just mistook that as Taylor's vocals. Um, so it's quite interesting watching her input um, of writing the songs and her recording and then you get into properly hear her actually recording them. So yeah, I really recommend watching those videos if you haven't and this edition. Another interesting version of Fearless is the Japanese edition. Japanese editions of Uh, Taylor's albums get very interesting as we go along. I'm sure we'll mention them some more. But for Fearless, the Japanese version included a lot of songs that eventually were on Beautiful Eyes, right? Yeah, so yeah, these it kind of has Beautiful Eyes as track list. So um obviously it has the original 13 songs up to change, and then track 14 is Beautiful Eyes, and then it's followed by Pitch to Burn and Only Me When I'm With You and I Heart Question Mark, which is quite an interesting track list because this is obviously different to the international versions that we just discussed even though it has a very similar cover it has a similar cover to the international version but just slightly more golden um it kind of is a similar color palette to taylor's version of fearless um but yeah this is a really cool uh, version it also has like a japanese kind of ob strip um and also the booklet has um obviously the ex- extended obviously than the original fearless because it has the lyrics for beautiful eyes pitch to burn i'm only me when i'm with you and i heart question mark which is quite interesting and like most japanese editions comes with a japanese lyric booklet which is also really cool japanese editions are like the superior versions of taylor albums there's always something they honestly about are. Them. i think because um th- like the asian music market have such cool editions of stuff and they're not like bog standard you know cds that we see you know it Mm. most editions are they're in really cool cases and a bit like um with lover you know where they had different versions there's like multiple different versions of stuff that you know are like books or like uh 
like there's so much more packaging involved in them that I think that mm. Western artists have to kind of appeal to an audience that is um, so used to really cool editions that they kind of enhance their editions for a Japanese market. So um, Japanese editions are always really, really cool ones to get your hands on. And I highly, highly recommend um, some versions are not as exciting as others. Um, you know, some have cooler packaging, some have different track lists. Um, certain Speak Now ones I wouldn't are not as exciting, but the Fearless Japanese edition is really cool because of its track list and just slightly different cover and uh, booklet and stuff. So yeah, I really recommend that version. Um, and I don't think it's too hard to get your hands on either or for ridiculous prices. I think Japanese, um, because they're still in print, are reasonably easy to get your hands on and not, and they hopefully won't break the bank like some of these versions. Mm. For sure. Obviously, a big edition of Fearless is the Platinum Edition. I'm sure many, many fans already know what the Platinum Edition is, but it's basically a re-release that included new songs. However, within the Platinum Edition, they were editions of the Platinum Edition <laughs> and different versions. Um, so we have like the Target version, the Walmart version, and they all kind of include either little extra content you know, beyond the extra content that we're already getting in the Platinum Edition, which includes, like, extra songs and a whole, like, DVD. Yeah. Um, they both include, like, little extra snippets of different things. Some are MVs, some are behind the scenes um, from those MVs. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about that, Cameron? I know you probably know more than me. Yeah, so the two differences between the editions the walmart and the target version is the target version comes with uh two performances from the clear channel um acoustic performance that taylor did so they're of untouchable and fearless whereas the walmart edition of fearless platinum edition comes with love story live at v fest so there are lots of differences between them and it is interesting it can all get very confusing when fearless has so many editions in itself it has the standard the international the platinum and then within them it has like subsets of different versions that have millions of different things but what's quite interesting is now obviously the clear channel has been released by big machine um for on streaming but that is those some of those songs were included on the fearless platinum edition videos of them um so yeah it's interesting um how many versions and editions there are um of these albums i personally don't have these two um mm -hmm. they're a bit harder to kind of come by in the uk you've got to normally ship them from the states um so i only have the platinum that is kind of the standard platinum and i also have a singapore version which just has a slightly different sticker on the front um and there are lots of different versions there's also kind of chinese editions that come with cool slip cases um so there's even more editions than just the target and walmart ones but these ones um, we've kind of highlighted because of the really cool exclusive content that they come with rather than just a different sticker or a different um casing um but yeah there are so many editions of fearless you we could be here all day purely just talking about all the different versions of fearless okay so another really cool version of fearless is the fearless box set and this um was sold through like big machines website taylor's website i think back in the day and big machine store in nashville were selling it i think for a while i'm not too sure anymore but this comes with a t-shirt a photo book an armband um the standard version of fearless and this really gorgeous box that kind of has a lock um this is a really kind of insert i would love to have this version of fearless i think it's just really really gorgeous um and just it's, it's just really lovely it's just in this little box it just feels quite special um and back in the day it wasn't that much money but now obviously it's quite hard to kind of come by with all the different pieces sometimes it's missing bits or whatever but yeah um, the i box imagine set, this is this yeah. is kind of like a very exclusive nowadays. it kind of reminds me a bit of the lover box set it's very similar right. to that um but just kind of a bit more kind of like a jewelry box almost the way that it kind of opens and it's really cool inside because it's got kind of um that, like the fearless cover on the top of the lid and some writing and stuff on the inside and outside it's a really cool edition of fearless um but yeah that is another one that i would definitely recommend it's something that i would love to add to my collection definitely next up we have speak now which uh is very interesting because the normal edition is kind of like the widespread one but the deluxe edition technically is a target exclusive deluxe like originally it was only available in target and i guess that's why her dress is red on it right yeah i guess so yeah especially in the states yeah that was where it was exclusively available was in target which is um interesting um and yeah i'm guessing that was the choice of the red dress but to be fair in the photo shoot the dress was red anyway. originally yeah um, mm. but it's interesting that they changed it to uh, like purple for the actual cover but then yeah for target yeah. i'm guessing the reason they thought 
that red would be yeah. a good idea was because in was my head cool. yeah in my head the explanation has always been because it was like exclusively deluxe in america there yeah it must have been that's why it's kind of red right yeah but... I, I, that was yeah, that's yeah. how i've always kind of felt as well even though the dressing because mm. you just assume that it's purple like that dress is so iconic sure. that the fact that it's not actually purple is just like a lie it's like it's you know like it's, it's like know. what it's like, we've yeah. been lied to yeah so yeah no i've always felt like that was the reason to change it back to red was kind of target exclusive yeah, so the Target Deluxe obviously has the Deluxe tracks, um, the Speak Now Deluxe tracks, but there's also differences within the Speak Now Deluxe version. So there is a UK Deluxe that has the same tracks as the Target, but also has US versions of the tracks. Um, so again, a bit like with Fearless, there's kind of different productions given to tracks to suit different markets. I guess, like we said, to appeal to a market that you know isn't so accustomed to country. But like I said, it has US versions of the tracks even though it's a uk version but then there's about a million different versions of speak now there's ones there's canadian ones i'm sure there's lots of asian different versions of stuff so yeah it's it is a bit of a minefield but two of the kind of standout ones are the target and the uk deluxe versions of speak now deluxe <laughs> so it is um it <laughs> is very complicated it is a bit of a mouthful but those are some really cool additions another really cool one is the starbucks slipcase version and this um, actually is the version that Taylor went and bought on the day um, of okay. the album release. So as you, as you know, most fans know, Taylor goes into stores on the day of the album release and, and buys the album. Um, normally, I don't think she did it for Lover. Um, she attended the pop-up fest, uh, the pop-up shop, didn't she? But I don't think she actually went in the store, but she definitely did for Reputation. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, she went to Starbucks because she always said how uh, she wanted her album to be sold in Starbucks because at the time only certain albums were ever sold in Starbucks. It was quite exclusive and they would normally be slightly different versions. They'd just kind of be in a slip case. Um, but yeah, Speak Now was the first of Taylor's albums to be available in Starbucks. And like I said, that's the version she bought. And it is slightly different to the standard CD kind of plastic case. So that's a really cool version to get your hands on as well. And to be fair, I don't think it's too expensive either. Again, I don't personally have it because um. It is American exclusive, so it's harder to get over to the UK. But that's a really cool version of Speak Now. Unfortunately, Speak Now doesn't have as many kind of distinguishable versions as much as, say, right. Fearless. You know, there's not much album cover changes or anything like that. It's more that a sticker is slightly different or there's a couple of extra remixes of a song, like US versions on there or a pop version shoved in here and there. So, um, yeah, that's the only kind of real big differences with Speak Now. There are... Some additions, like I said, in um, Asia that have extra kind of bonus uh, physical content, um, like kind of postery things. But other than that, nothing um, in the same vein as Fearless of like having totally different track lists of having beautiful eyes songs on and debut songs. Um, right, assume, right. Um, but yeah, those are the kind of really cool versions. Like I said, other than the Record Store Day versions, which we've mentioned previously. And um, that's another really cool version of Speak Now. But hopefully when Taylor releases uh speak now taylor's version and um we'll get kind of all of the different deluxes and everything will all be on all one all together yes. yeah like <laughs> and that's how we've kind of got with red and with fearless the fact that we've got like you know today was a fairy tale and then ronan and stuff like that all shoved on it's kind of like a it's pulling up all the different versions being like look here's one big universal but the ultimate edition the taylor's version and hopefully we get that with speak now um but yeah those are the kind of really cool editions of speak now Having said that, though, we haven't finished with the Speak Now era because it is interesting to just quickly mention the World Tour Live CDs. So, um, as we know, in the Speak Now era, Taylor released um, the World Tour, Speak Now World Tour Live CD, which also comes with a DVD. And apart from its standard version, which in itself is an amazing album to own because it does come with, you know, the whole thing, really, a lot yeah. of really, really cool performances. And I uh, love, I've always loved the CD booklet and the design of the CD. I yeah, think it's so gorgeous. It's really nice. I really wish we got it for other tours because it's just so, sure. it feels so lovely. Like it's just so, it feels so speak now, that CD, like all the graphics in the booklet and everything. It's just so gorgeous, that CD. That, like you said, in itself is just a standout version. However, there are other editions of the World Tour Live um, CD, which are interesting. A couple to mention are the Brazilian version which includes the exclusive performance of Taylor and uh, Paula Fernandez singing Long Live, the version where we have obviously Paula Fernandez's vocals and verses in Portuguese on it. So that's 
a song that we've spoken about previously uh but it's it's just a really cool little thing to give like specifically the brazilian sound. it is it is really nice and the fact that it was a single there and the fact that the cd is kind of like you know with deluxe cds where you can kind of pull the inside case out and there's normally a dvd on the reverse it's like that you pull it out and then there's the seed like a single cd of it so it is quite special that that was kind of given to Brazilian fans and was totally exclusive to them and, and is a, an addition that I would really, really love to add to my collection. It is pretty difficult fact... to get your hands on that. Oh, yeah. it is quite difficult. Yeah, definitely. And the fact that it's, I think it's because it is like, it because it has that totally different CD in there. Exactly. Um, it is a really, really nice addition, definitely. And it is a really lovely thing that they did for Brazilian fans and the fact that that was a proper big old single out in Brazil, whereas it wasn't really given that treatment. Um, universally across the globe hmm. the other version of the world tour live cd uh which is also a really really exclusive one and kind of hard to come by but i know you have it which i'm so jealous is the target deluxe version which just or like on, as a front picture it inverts the colors right so it's like black and white yeah it has like yeah the white it's just got like a white back white background and then the guitar is like really red so yes like that's true again target spread. It yeah, is a yeah, edition. I guess so. Yeah, um, and yeah, it was sold also in uh, there's like a Canadian version, but the only real difference is kind of uh, uh, like the copywriting on the back and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, the target that is a really cool edition because it comes with yeah. so on the DVD, um, on the DVD, it doesn't have ours on the standard mm -hmm. of what the Speak Now World Tour Live, it doesn't have the video of ours but on the dvd of the target deluxe it does it does and then on the bonus content which is the best stuff it yeah. has taylor's performance of nashville sweet escape and um mean music video behind the scenes so that's yeah. the best bit about it is that definitely definitely that dvd for sure those dvds taylor's version of nashville i've just i i don't really know much about that song i don't actually even know who it's sung by um i just love the way she sings it is so gorgeous um so i'm so glad we got you know those versions of that and sweet escape the way taylor sings that is really really cool so mm -hmm. no, that is really that is like that's kind of the holy grail i think of the speak now world tour for sure cds for sure yeah it Target has it Deluxe. all basically and it, yeah. it's quite it's not impossible to to find at all no. but it is quite sought after and because of that sometimes prices do get a little bit out of hand but you know it's it is possible to to achieve it you know, get it in a in a nice price range, I think. Next up, we have Red, which again has really, really amazing versions and I think additions. this is where they stepped it up. This is where they're, they're like, let's give it the fearless treatment and step it yeah, up. Yeah, so. it has as many or as like um, such a confusing array as fearless, but it does have really amazing additions, I must say. Starting off with the French edition, which includes the live on the same uh, set, which just is such a good version yeah it's such a cool this was one of my most sought after cds i desperately wanted and when i went to france i just searched every store imaginable even stores that didn't even sell cds just like please can i find it and i would find red cds and i'll be like no that's not the live on the scene one where is it where is it um and recently uh, probably about a year or so ago now actually i found it for a really, really decent price on ebay and bought it and was worried that it wasn't going to be that version yeah. and i was waiting till it rocked up i was like please don't just be standard red please 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 and it was the french edition which is such a cool version that yeah. performance is just gorgeous it is available on youtube um yeah. you know it's not exclusive to that cd now anymore um but it is such a cool it's just such a cool edition of red i really really love that version and the fact it has that dvd because those performances are just so there's something about taylor and when she is acoustic um or in a it's more kind of stripped broken. back yeah she, her vocals are just so much more because they're more center stage and i just love them and yeah, her performance of i knew trouble and you belong with me was just so cool really really cool addition and yeah i'm so glad that i added that to my collection because um for sure really, it is a really, really, really cool version. yeah yeah for sure like you said we are lucky because all of these things that we are chatting about are available online one way or another usually on youtube um and you know, it is still very, very interesting though to book collectors to find these little hidden gems because they're, I never knew of all of these things. And when we started getting into it and obviously you being such a big collector, it's definitely such an interesting thing to see how like these little things were added here and there to really differentiate and how 
you know, red isn't really, it doesn't mention Paris or France no. at all. I, th- I suppose it's because of the Begin Again music video, but yeah, it's interesting yeah, how that's it true. It. But honestly, you know, I wouldn't have put two and two together really and said, oh, this must have an exclusive in France. But just like she did with the Brazilian version of, of you know, the Speak Now World to Alive CD, it's just such a nice nod that she did like this specific French edition. Of course, Red had a deluxe version, which included a few extra songs, a different, a very different um, front cover to it. Yeah, honestly. what is your opinion on that cover? Because I've, I've, yeah. I've, yeah, what do you think about it? Because obviously it's so, very different. Yeah, Red is original, is obviously, you can see her whole face and the deluxe covers it, to be honest yeah. with you, and has that cut out of Red on it. I actually quite like it. I, Me too. To be honest with you, when I first got the album it was the deluxe edition so i've kind of always in my head that has always been the red album yeah cover until obviously taylor's version kind of replaced it for me but um i quite like it i think it's me quite a, it really differentiates it for sure yeah I've, I've never been a massive fan of the red album cover i always think the red has such a gorgeous photo shoot and talking about i know this I is know. the cd version but a really cool merch piece is the red photo shoot booklet that is just so gorgeous and includes just all of the incredible photos from um, the red photo shoot. And I've always felt like it had such a cool photo shoot, but for me, the cover just, I don't know. I I loved the red lip, but there was just something that was like, I never Mm. really was that amazed by it. And I did prefer the deluxe, whereas Taylor's version of it, I feel like has massively enhanced it. But yeah, I do really like the deluxe cover and glad that it was a bit like with, to be fair, a lot of the deluxe to distinguish them uh, we'll obviously move on to 99 and that obviously has slightly different as well they kind of change things up um, mm. um and make them a bit more distinguishable with platinum and then speak now it's, to it's funny there. how they they chose to do different things because going back to debut like the difference between the standard and the deluxe oh it's a, like a totally different cover yeah yeah it, so it's funny how then continuing forward they chose not to change the cover so much but change elements in it like so, the yeah. speak now dress the yeah. red you know kind of like cut out words the 1989 being written over little her. changes yeah. yeah yeah um exactly so yeah definitely interesting for sure how they chose to make Those bigger covers. or smaller differences yeah mm-hmm. but n- now most of these deluxe elements on red deluxe have been kind of included in taylor's version so it is a really cool addition to have but um most of those elements now are included in taylor's version so yeah Okay, so another really cool edition of Red is the Play.com signed CD slipcase. So this was sold during Red's kind of initial release and has a totally different cover um, from the covers that we just mentioned. Um, And it's in a slipcase, so the slipcase is signed by Taylor. And originally, I think these were sold around about £25 um, max, probably less than that now. Um, But these are really, really cool and now are quite hard to get your hands on. Um, but I've always loved this cover, actually, in comparison to the other two that we just mentioned with um, the original Red and then Deluxe Red. But this is a really, really cool edition of Red. Other than the slipcase itself, the CD is just the standard version, no real difference. But the slipcase um, is the kind of selling point of this. It's very random, play.com. Um, yeah. And it's quite a random place to sell it. And the fact it was signed um, when things weren't really sold as signed very much. Whereas nowadays, artists are really promote cds and vinyl and stuff because obviously m- most people go to streaming um to encourage people to buy them they do sign stuff a lot more now it's kind of more accessible to get uh you know artist signatures but back then you know that wasn't really something that was constantly mm. included on everything um so it was quite a cool addition and definitely definitely one if you can get your hands on it and get your hands on it for a decent price it's a really really cool one to add because it looks so distinguishably different to the other two versions of red covers Another really sought after edition of Red is the limited edition Zyme Pack, which includes like a magazine kind of content, right? Yeah, it's a bit more kind of like the lover booklets. Um, mm-hmm. the, the Zyme Packs, yeah, are kind of like uh, booklety CDs that normally have a CD, CD kind of slipped into the back of the um, book itself. And it included the Red uh, uh, booklet um, and also had kind of extra bonus content of just some extra images of Taylor during the end of the Speak Now era um some info about taylor then um a kind of passage that she wrote um and then um towards the end has uh all of the albums photos of the albums and their track lists and then the two tours um at the time which obviously only fearless and speak now 
um, and then did come with a kind of little um, card that then you could download the deluxe tracks of the album um, because the CD is just the standard. But yeah, this is a really cool edition. And there are actually sure. two, two versions of this. There's one okay. that is just the one that I described. And then mm-hmm. there's also one that comes with a poster and um, uh, guitar picks. Um, right. So yeah, there are two versions. I have the one without the poster and the guitar picks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there are two versions. So the guitar pick one is a really, really cool edition. And it includes... Um, uh, some tweets of Taylor's and some pictures from her Instagram back in the day. So it's quite a nice kind of, um, it kind of sums up the Speak Now, late Speak Now, early Red Era quite nicely because um, there's the tweets about her Hunger Games um, uh, Safe and Sound song as well as some stuff about her and Ed Sheeran writing and the fact that they like um, wrote while eating cheeseburgers. Then there's the mm-hmm. tweet, I think, where she talks about eating Toy Story gummies while watching while sat with cats and stuff and how she's four years old as well as 80 years old it's quite funny taylor's original kind of tweets and stuff <laughs> yeah. so no this is a really really nice edition um and it's a really cool version and yeah it's in a similar vein to the uh lover um ad- uh, deluxe editions another amazing edition of red red had so many good editions like oh yeah so many really good... cool ones yeah printing and, and releases. really different like they're really different from it whereas with the fearless ones they're all kind of cds just similar different track mm. lists reds are just like a zine the pack packaging. and then like yeah, yeah they've really changed it up a bit so this next one is the valentine's day edition which is absolutely sick it includes so many good things oh it's gorgeous it was sold in south korea and yeah it's insane it's this proper like box that has all this ribbon and it just looks so cool it's funny that red is like a heartbreak album and that's how it's been marketed especially the taylor's version but it has <laughs> yeah. a valentine's day edition you know i mean as if it's like that's a lover should have had a valentine's day edition not red you know not like this heart sure. like For sure. too well you know but yeah it is such a cool edition that comes with the kind of sign pack that we mentioned as well as obviously a really cool box and a calendar which was the t- uh, for 2013 um which is and which is more like postcards really with kind of dates mm. on the back um and yeah it's just such a cool that it doesn't come with much content it only really comes with the kind of zine packy cd though, that we mentioned really it's the box that's the real mm-hmm. selling point and it's really gorgeous um yeah I, I have loved this edition and would love to have this in my collection but unfortunately it's a lot of money there's you know it's like 300 pounds plus upwards mm-hmm. um which is a lot for you know basically just a cd in a box but it is a really, really cool edition and um, would have been a really cool one to probably get your hands on during its initial release when it wouldn't have been so pricey. And it is quite strange as well that um, uh, it had a Valentine's edition exclusively in South Korea. It's interesting how um, these different editions are marketed in different places, like with the French version and stuff. But no, Valentine's Day edition is probably my favourite out of all of these, uh, as well as the French edition. Okay, so the kind of like holy grail and ultimate version, especially of vinyl, but just of red versions in general, is the ACM promo for your consideration, coloured red vinyl. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the reason why the Record Store Day vinyl was clear and not red was because of this version. And this version, like I said, was exclusive for ACM voters and was used to promote the Red album and f- encourage voters to vote for the Red album and is a gorgeous edition of Red. It comes in this, it would have been sent originally in this gorgeous box that says like Taylor Swift, uh, Nashville's finest, one of Nashville's finest exports, Red, and then you open it up and it's the a red vinyl with a kind of slip cover um, that says, uh, and she painted the town, but where it says crossed out world red and then says that um, it's for the ACM consideration and the um, categories that they were hoping for Taylor to be nominated for and it includes obviously the red vinyl itself that cover that I described and two gorgeous red vinyl bright red and it includes also this kind of set of cards as well as the red tour um, booklet it's just a really gorgeous version and it's very rare that you see it with its original box and all of the cards as well um, I know that um, you can find it um, online and on discogs with you know, just it's kind of the cover that I described and the vinyl, but it's very expensive and a very sought after vinyl. Um, and I know that back in the day it was something that people desperately wanted because of its gorgeous red. And um, now, obviously, the Target version of Taylor's version um, has this kind of similar colour, but this is a really, really gorgeous version of red. And I would love to add this to my collection, but unfortunately, I don't have thousands of pounds um, no, to want it. But it is 
goes for very very high prices oh yeah hundreds and hundreds oh yeah loads and loads of money and you know there's a reason why because obviously it's very very exclusive um, Mm. but it is absolutely gorgeous there are lots of fakes that i do know that float around so you have to be really (gasps) careful um, oh god because i know that some people have bought fakes before um where there's a slight difference with the font um so yeah you have to be quite careful with that because obviously it is so sought after and there's another edition of an album as well that also has lots of fakes another cool thing to mention though if you are a collector and about um the vinyl and stuff is that when you kind of line them up red's kind of um side when you know when you like line up cds and vinyl it's kind of side Mm. of the case is kind of like a pale greeny color isn't it um however this vinyl is bright red so it really sticks out from the other red vinyls it's just gorgeous right. i really really love it um and yeah it's a very cool very very cool edition of red and probably it's definitely the best vinyl version of red but um, probably one of the best yeah. versions as well as well red, has, red definitely has some really really cool editions i think out of the albums that we've um mentioned so far red is the one with the really really cool unique versions other than the kind of box set of fearless that's the kind of only one that's a bit more kind of of an event in terms of like an right. edition yeah um, whereas red you know with design packs and the play.com and the valentine's day and yeah um the promo really yeah of, all, really all cool. of these country albums do have those different editions a lot of different like extra tracks on one or the other or whatever but the, the red ones really really stick out because they're so different one from the other like one is in a pack one is like a magazine kind of thing one is a slip case one is like this whole big thing so yeah Mm. i I definitely agree with you yeah yeah okay this concludes the first part of this episode um make sure that you subscribe over on our youtube channel swiftly spoken podcast so that you don't miss us releasing the second part of this episode as well as follow us over on our instagram which is at swiftly spoken podcast and rate us on spotify and apple music